Let's see. I want to see if I can figure out uh, a way for you guys to see over my shoulder. So bear with me. I won't be able to see your questions in the same way. But if you... Let's see here. Um, stand by. to be able to see what's happening in here as I do this. Ooh, that looks like a good angle. Is that a good angle? Okay. This is not a style of finishing bowls that I normally do. Um, usually I always have my thumb braced on the side, but because it's so deep, there's nowhere for me to brace my thumb. So I'm doing much more of a kind of a push and a, and a pivot in. But again, I'm just making this up as I go along. Sorry if I, if I put this in a spot where you can't see it. It's just me not being able to. There we go. How's that? Is this helpful to watch it from this angle, guys? I feel like this way you can see what the hook knife is doing. All right. And you can see how strongly that curve here has gone in, so um, you can see why I kept this thickness the way I did that curve there. Um, Apologies. Okay, so now you can see now you can see that I've kind of at this point I've defined the inside rim about how I want it. So now I'm going to push the center of the bowl down further, going up to that rim. Sorry.
Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, that feels about as nice and clean as I can make it on the inside. So now it's time to pull down the outside. So, there's the sheath. All right, so now I still have, there we have this. Now I want to create this into a lip that sticks around. I've never tried to do this before. So I think what I'm going to try and do The other thing I want to do is blend that into that. Let's see here. So I have that like that. Then All right, so I'm going to stop wasting time sharpening. <laughs> it's true, Matt. It's very true. Okay. All right. So, hmm. I wonder if I... Let's 
essentially be a little hollow. on this lip that I want to keep. So what you're watching me do is try and figure out how on earth to create a lip here. Um, <laughs> what you're watching me do is try and figure out how to create a lip here. Boy, I'm not having any great ideas as to how to go about it. Um, think here. Because the problem is that the, the spoon, the cuts, a bunch of these cuts need to sort of go around the edge. And hmm. think about it while I peck away at this. <clears throat> So at this stage, I'm going to use my fingers to feel for the appropriate thickness. But you can see how many of these cuts sort of swirl right parallel with that lip, so I can't completely eliminate it. Um, hmm. Maybe it's enough simply to leave it kind of strong? Let's try that tack for a moment. So now the name of the game is, yeah, because you see how like that smoothing cut swirls right along with it. Um, so it's not like I'm coming down from the highest part down to the lip and create a stop cut there. Okay. Good. This step is kind of the most uh, laborious and most important in the finished object to take your time doing this and really remove enough material because if you leave too much material here, um, the whole thing just kind of feels thick. Um, and obviously if you go too hastily, you could end up ruining the spoon by removing too much material in a crucial spot. So it's about it's 
about going at the right pace, but then going for long enough. Now you'll notice how I'm able to go right back from here all the way to the front, um, which is uncommon and it has to do with how steeply this is tilted up within the grain. So the grain's change doesn't happen until I'm right back here. More typical on a spoon would be to carve these going in this direction, but that's not the case here because it's so steep within the grain. Thanks, Phoebe. Are you lost for words because it's nice, or are you lost for words because <laughs> Matt's going to make me a longer knife? <laughs> Yeah, you know, Matt Matt, and I have been talking about how a longer knife could really speed things up, particularly in the roughing out process. Um, in that the longer that your blade is, the longer a cut you can make. And so that leads to smoother lines faster. Okay, let's see. Now these cuts at the very tip are going across the end grain, so I have to make sure that my knife is really cutting them nicely. Otherwise there's a chance they could tear the whole thing. Carbon action while you shaving your brother's hair real short. <laughs> yep. All right, where is the, where's the sheet? Ah, I'm, I'm gonna, actually I don't need the sheet. What I need is the straw. I'm gonna strop this. Uh, just to give me that extra little edge. Hey, Casey. Um, as I'm doing this end grain, make sure that I don't tear it. That would be a real shame. This is turning out to be a nice spoon. Okay. Yeah, that's easier. Either way, it's easier to cut across the end grain. Instead of trying to go straight across the end like this, it's better to sort of sneak up on it from the side. You have more grain support that way.
Okay, so now I'm feeling it all over. I want it to be thickest in the middle, and then I want it to taper up to the sides. So these are pretty accurate in helping me figure out where it's still a little on the thick side. But it's the right thickness in the middle now, so I need to sort of blend rather than push everything down. See how it really doesn't want to cut going from from the top down like that. It just doesn't want to. It's much happier cutting coming in from the side. How many of these have I done now? Uh, this is just the second one. Yeah, I did that one a little while back. Uh, I decided to do another one. Try and learn a little bit more from this form. It's such an unusual form. A lot of different things going on for it. Between this thing here and the wide handle that tapers the opposite way, the tail flip at the end, it goes the opposite of how I normally hold. Um, how I normally do tail flips, how steeply it's tilted within the grain, what that entails. There's a lot to be learned for me from it. Um, so rather than wait till I get to the order that's, so I think somebody ordered one of these. So I'll be getting around to that order. Um, I forget when, sometime in April. But. useful for me to practice these things while they're fresh. All right, that's pretty good. Now one last thing I wanna work on is this thickness here, there we go. Good. Slight, slight flex to the handle, but not much. Okay, so now this is where it would be tempting to be done. If I spend another five minutes on this bowl, and I don't mess it up. It will be so much more delightful. One thing I will say is this thicker rim here has left the rim a little thicker than I am used to doing these days. Um, trying to decide if it bothers me or not.
windy outside today. The rim thickness will look good, how chunky the handle is. Yeah, of course, man. Um, yeah, I think the rim thickness will look good. Um, That's a nice idea. All right, if I do this, then the curvature of the knife will create a slight flare out to the rim. So I might not be able to define it the way I originally thought, but I can do this. And that will get me some definition of the rim. Daniel, how are things? Good. So you can see the very slight flare that I'm getting from the curve of the knife right there. Okay. Let's call that good. All right, now I'm going to do Let's define this rim now with its micro chamfers. Tiniest micro chamfer there. Let's see here. Where do the micro chamfers need to happen in this direction? Okay, good, that's done. This is cherry wood. And now, that's how small I'm making these chamfers. They're super tiny.
So Matt is trying to convince me, thank you, that I should that I'd be better off making my finishing cuts with a 30 degree knife instead of this knife, which is 26 degrees angle on the blade. Um, I don't know. I'm not convinced. I feel like I've got perfectly good control with this knife. But I'll try it. Oh, it's 24. Why do the bowls be so smooth? Um, hmm. uh, I get the bowl to be so smooth by knowing exactly how much I can, um, exactly how deep I can go, and probably by stropping my hook knife. That's definitely one of the things that's made the biggest difference. Um, And having a good hook knife, right? So this is the I use the Manad knock from Matt, Matt White Temple Mountain Woodcraft, and I know exactly how deep I can go with it. Um, and I back off before I start getting those chatter marks, and I don't get those chatter marks as soon as you probably do because I'm stropping. So it's a combination of all of those things. All right, now the question is, do I want to leave the bottom corner of this rim sharp or not? What's going to make it help it stand out the best? It's a little too sharp to leave. Wrong direction. Gosh, that's weird.
Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, it's worth buying the best hook knife that you can possibly afford. Um, of which my admittedly biased opinion is that Matt makes the best in part because I get to have input on what's working and what's not working. Um, and, uh, and also as far as straps go, if you get a, the best hook knives have an inner rail system. So you sharpen them on the inside with sandpaper around a dowel. I do with my sheath. There it is. <clears throat> In which case you want a strop stick and probably the best place to get that would be from Tom Scandy and Spoon Carving with Tom. Um, his books are closed right now but they're gonna open in a couple weeks I think. So um, that would be the, the place to do it. Super excited about that knife Matt. So you can see how I can use quite a bit of strong pressure here to actually create this basically sanded looking surface. It's going to show it to you. There we go. Hold it back close to my face. Thank you, autofocus. Hey. weekend special lovely ladle the grackle sauce ladle the idea is that you can get into a jar of something with it Ooh, and a little more right in this little bit here thanks Wesley Okay, thanks for watching guys.